When did you realize you wanted to hone your story? Probably, yeah, when it needed an overhaul, you mean? <laughs> yeah, it's seriously. You know, I think there are points in our lives where we get the call, but we deny the call, right? So at 30, I had the call, and I denied it. And I just kept going along as I went along. And then toward my late 30s, my life was not on the track that I wanted it to be. And I said, what's well, not working? You know, I've had these breakups. I, you know, I get engaged, I'm, but I don't follow through. One of my friends called me the runaway bride, <laughs> right? All this stuff, I'm like, what is the one common denominator in all of this? Oh, that was not the answer I wanted, me, <laughs> right? In all these relationships that I'd had, I was the one common denominator that wasn't working out. What was going wrong in me? And once I had that sort of epiphany that the buck stops with me and that I'm responsible for everything, the way I've manifested my own life, you know, that was everything I saw before me, that was a very sobering moment. Hmm. Now, how do I get out of that quicksand that I had been consumed by over the years? I didn't even realize I, at this point, I was so far under the quicksand, I had a straw that must have gone up like 10 feet to give me air, right? How do I get out of that without sinking? And so I thought, well, okay, I had a breakup, I was unhappy, and I said, I'm gonna create a mantra. Let's see if this mantra is gonna help me get out of this, because I'd become a total workaholic. That was the other aspect of my life that I hated. I just worked, you know, and traveled for work, and I would be on the road, and I'd be in a hotel room, and one day I looked around, and I was like, is this what I want for my life? This is not what I want. I'm lonely out here. I work with people. I have big teams of people, and I'm completely unsatisfied. I'm connected with no one. That's how I felt. I mean, I have really, I have really good friends, but even them, I, when you're traveling all the time, it's hard to stay close. So I had to really look at my life and begin to dissect it. But in my personal life, I wanted to get married. But I was telling myself that I wasn't worthy in somehow when I really began to dig deep, right? And so I created this mantra and I said, you know what? If I get married now or when I'm 90, it'll be okay. I, or, or never, I can't remember, it was something along those lines. It's been a while, I've been married <laughs> 12 and a half years oh, now. congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, but I started this mantra because I could hear the negative voice in my head. And I'm like, who is that? Like, where did she come from and how did this start? Well, it didn't really matter. But what mattered was is that I created a new groove and that I began to um, tell myself, it's all going to be okay. If I believe that he's out there looking for me too, right, we'll find each other. But I have to get to a place where that energetically I'm gonna resonate in a way that he can find me. We're like beacons, right? Dude, dude, what kind of tone are we sending out? Is this beautiful, clear church bell? And is that enough? And yes, it is. Or is it some other kind of fuzzy, half committed signal, which I was putting out before, I guess what I was finding, some other fuzzy half committed signal. But when I began to say, this is who I am and what I want to find in the world, he appeared, he appeared really fast within three months. Mm -hmm. And then there were new things to learn, right? So the journey never stops. <clears throat> That's one of the things I'd like to say about my speakers. I have three speakers right now. One is Amy, who's a friend, um, and you know, with everything that she's been through, the, with the losing her legs below the knee, um, but gone on to live an incredible life as a snowboarder. She was on Dancing with the Star Stars. Wow. Uh, came in second. I mean, wow. she's an amazing woman. I have another speaker that I've just started working with, Danielle uh, Umstead, also on Dancing with the Stars. She's legally blind. And she's a, a Paralympian as well, and a blind skier. Wow. She can haul down that mountain 20, uh, 70 miles an hour. <clears throat> I can't do that seeing, okay? And then I have another speaker, Chris Norton, who um, had a football in injury, 
in a college, his freshman year of college. And that injury was, spoiler alert, stop the video right now if you wanna look up Chris Norton and football and then watch his talk um, and learn more about him. But um, he had a, a neck injury and is now um, a quadriplegic. You may see, have seen some of his videos. Um, he uh, walked for his college graduation and he also walked um, for his wedding. So those videos wow. have gone viral. Three extraordinary people um, that I feel a lot of pressure to help with their stories and to do justice with them because we humans tend to look at story and think, oh, that's it. I don't know what I would do if, you know, I was blind or I couldn't, you know, didn't have feet or I couldn't walk uh, unassisted, right? Or I was in a wheelchair. Uh, these people's gone, they go on, they've gone on to live rich and full lives. Their stories didn't end there. They actually began there. And I think that's a fundamental difference um, for people who get stuck after an injury or after, because they'll tell me about people that they've known where they're not having the same lives because they, of their beliefs, their deep-seated beliefs that they haven't worked on changing yet, um, that they haven't accepted where they are. Resistance is an insidious thing. Um, and so I feel a lot of pressure to do right by those stories and to elevate those stories to say, everybody, you know, it's not just this moment that changed the course of their lives. Their lives, they continue to have other moments that are changing the course of their lives. And I think that's important in story, that one moment can be so big that it can overshadow the rest. But to know that, that you are like, these people as you watch them in the audience because they think that they're superheroes, the audience often. And I'm always working and, and cognizant of that to try to elevate that story in a way that it isn't superhuman, that it's human like you. And you too are superhuman, right? If that makes sense. So um, I'm, I'm very honored to work with these individuals that are so exceptional and beautiful.